Search your memory. What's, what's the point of the board? Oh, um, uh, distance. Horse times? Time. Distance. Work is horse times distance. And now, the thing about work is, work is, I'll just demonstrate force times distance. So if I'm going to do some work, I can apply force to this chair, and I can push that over at whatever that distance was, and we can calculate the amount of work. If I had a spring scale and I dragged it, it'd be easier. We could just read how many newtons of force I apply, measure how far I push it, and then we can we can get work. The the thing about work is, I'm I don't know if this is the right symbol, but work is equivalent to energy, except that things aren't usually 100% efficient. So you usually, if you do some work on something, just because I did some work on this chair. Um, it doesn't really have any energy anymore. If, if this were a frictionless environment and I did some work on this chair, it would have an amount of energy equal to the amount of work that I did. So I would apply a force over a distance and give it a certain number of joules of energy and it would just continue moving forever. And if you got its velocity and did one half mv squared, its kinetic energy would equal the work that I did. So work and, and energy are pretty much equivalent. If so you do some energy. work to something, you give it energy, and you lose energy. What? Sorry, is it measured, is it measured in joules? Joules, yeah. They're both joules. So, the, um, the question is, if you have a, a bow, and this graph represents the force that you have to apply as you pull a bow back to certain distances, how much work does it take to pull the bow all the way back? Now let me sh kind of show you the details of this. We, we figured out last class this must be a little bow because the distances aren't very much. This is uh, this is meters. So this maximum pull distance is 0.4 meters here. So somebody grabbed the string and they pulled it back to about that far. That's not very far. It must be a good zone. And each of these dots tells us to, not to pull it back but to hold it at that point what sort of a force you have to apply. If you had a spring scale attached to the to the bow string and you're pulling it back, how much force you would have to have. So in the beginning, when you pull it back, there's 0 0.05 meters. How many how many centimeters is that? Five. Five centimeters. So this is only about three centimeters. If you pull it back this far, you suddenly have to apply a force of about 80, 76, 77, somewhere in there, that many that many newtons of force just to hold it there. And then if you pull it back to the five centimeter mark, now you're up to almost 150 newtons to hold it there. And this force gets greater and greater and greater until you get to the 25 centimeter mark. So the hardest place to hold the bow would be pulling it about that far back to 25 centimeters. And at that point, you'd have to apply maybe a 220 or so newton force. But then once you get beyond there, the amount of force you have to apply goes down until you get back to the full distance of 0.4 meters and you only have to apply a 130 newton force again. So that, that's what this is showing. This, the, that's the nice thing about a compound bow is that it goes up but then it comes back down because this is where you want to hold it for a while and you want it to be easy to hold it there. What we're going to be doing later on, you're going to make cars in here and last year they when I assigned the car project, everybody got to make a car and the goal was to make it go as fast as possible. But the caveat was you could only put two joules of energy into the car and it had to be mechanical energy. So you had to know how to figure out how much energy your car was getting. And most of the cars were spring powered in some way. And so we would you'd figure out how much force it takes to, to pull back the spring or to wind the spring. And we would, we would do the same thing we're gonna do now and that's how we would get the amount of energy you put into it. So, number two says, how much work is required to draw the bowstring back to here? Work is force times distance. Distance part's easy. So I could just, if I had, wanted to use my equation, work equals force times 0.4 meters. But what do I use for force? Yeah, but, but what, what is the force? Or why is that a trick question? So the 
force or the electron? Well, the force in the beginning is zero. Oh. And then the force is. No, I thought you meant at point four meters though. It's like right. The force to hold it there is point four meters. But when you're pulling it back, Did you're all you're applying a force no. over a distance, and the distance is point four, but it, it's not the same force. The force is variable. The force changes. So if if I had a constant 130 newton force, all I would have to do is put 130 newtons in there and multiply it by, by um, 0.4 meters. But the force changes. So the average of all the force. You could do that. Yeah, you could. You could get the average force. That's that's probably there's a shortcut to the way I'm going to show you, and that's the shortcut to find the average. But still, the average is it's kind of tricky too. So here, here's what I would recommend doing. This is what I want you to do tonight. Um, the goal, I didn't tell you to do up, up here, but actually, yeah, number three. The goal is to be able to get a graph of work or energy um, versus draw distance. And right now, we have a graph of force versus distance. I want one of work versus distance. And last class, I tried to do this on the board. I just made a mess of it. And for some reason, I got all sweaty. I have no idea why I got all sweaty. So I'm going to try to breathe deeply and sit really still this time and just do this on the on this sheet that I copied. Alright. Couldn't even do simple addition last time. The advantage of being in here. So, in, what I'm going to want you to do is instead of trying to say, now, what's the force multiplied by the total distance? You can't do that. It's undoable. So break this up into intervals. You can break it up into as many intervals as you want. The more intervals you break it up in, into, the, the more precise and accurate your answer is going to be. But I'm just going to break this up into four separate parts. And I'm going to figure out how much work was done during each of these parts. And then I'm going to add it all up. So. Instead of just, how much work is this? I'm going to say, how much work did I do here? How much work did I do from there to there? And then from there to there? And then from there to there? And, and I'll add them all up and get the total energy. So for this particular part, work equals force times distance. And what do we know for certain for this interval here? Do we know the force or the distance? No, the distance is, is what? 0.1 meters. So going to be some kind of a force times 0.1 meter. What do I use for the force? What would make sense? Force changes. So what's a, kind of a sensible way to proceed here? The median. What's that? Median. Median or the, or the mean, you can just average them. So if you, one way to do it is to look at the force at the end. That's by the time you pull it back all the way to 0.1 meters, you're at this force. At the beginning, it was zero. So that is, if this is 150 and that's 200, what would you say that is? 190. I don't care that you're totally exact on this. So if that's 190 and this is zero, what's the average force, approximately? 85. Well, no, 95. 95. So. 190 divided by 2 is 95 newtons. So 95 newtons multiplied by 0.1 meters gives us a total amount of work of 9.5 joules. <laughs> so if this, so you put 9.5 joules of energy into that bow when you pull it back that far. And then for the next segment from here to here, for this next interval, the work is going to equal force times distance, and the distance is what? There to there is 0 0.1 meter again. I picked even even intervals. Just have to come up with what the, the force is. So what do you think the force is here? 220? 215? I'm gonna go I'll, I'll call it 220 just to make things simple. And if it starts at 190 and then it goes up to 220, the average would be 15 would be halfway in between them, at like the distance to the center. So what's the average? 205. 205. 
So the average force is about 205, or newtons, not joules. So that's the force, 205 newtons. Multiply that force times the distance, and the total amount of work is 20.5 joules. So the first interval, we did this much work. Second interval is, is more work. It's about twice as hard to, you have to use twice as much energy to get it from this mark to the next as you did in the beginning. So this force is, is getting greater. This next interval, it looks like if this is 220, this is about 220 again. But it does go up a little bit. We just call it 220 good enough? Yeah. So if that's the case, the work equals 220 newtons, that's the force, times the distance, which is still from 0.2 to 0.3 is 0.1 meters, and 22 joules. Then for the, for the last interval, we've got 220 newtons there, this, what does that look like? 130, I'll call it 130. So if this is 130 and that's 220, the average would be? 175. Uh, 175 is what I get. Yeah, 175. So the total amount of work is the force, 175 newtons, times the distance, 0.1 meters. And you get 17.5 so the goal on the on the assignment tonight is to take some data like this. I don't actually give you a graph. I'll, I'm just giving you data, and then you have to convert this into a graph of of work versus distance. So I'll sketch the <coughs> graph down here. It doesn't have to be beautiful. You, you can. Use some sort of a graphing program if you want. You could use Excel, but you could just sketch it out. So my distances are going to be 0 meters, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And then the units over here, this will be work or energy in joules. And I'm just going to make this 0, 50. 100. So the uh, the work done during the, the first interval between here and here is 9.5 joules. So I just just do this kind of a graph. Or actually, you can you don't have to do that kind of a graph. But at the end of at the end of here, this is going to be. 9.5 joules of work. And then at the end of 0.2 meters, what would that be? How many joules of work total would have been done by the end of 0.2 meters? 30. 30. We've got the 9.5 from the first interval plus the 20.5 from the second interval. So this would put a dot up at 30 joules. And then after 0.3 meters, what would we have? 52. And you don't really have to label these. Just doing that so we can see what, because this isn't very precise, see what the numbers are. And then the total amount of work done, pulling it back all 0.4 meters, would be what? 69.5. Which would be uh, somewhere around here. So the, the work looks like that. It's kind of kind of linear, not like the force curve. Most of the time, what you're going to have is um, the work graphs are going to be they're going to look exponential. They're going to curve upward because usually, as as you stretch a spring or something like that, the force that you have to apply to stretch a spring just goes up and up and up and up linearly most of the time. And um, then with every interval, you're doing more work than the interval before, so this climbs a lot steeper toward the end. But that's the that's the basic idea. You have to 
take something like this, some data, and then make this kind of a graph. And if you if you wanted to at this point, we could um, shoot an arrow with this with this um, bow and measure the velocity of the arrow, measure the mass of the arrow, and get the kinetic energy. And if the kinetic energy came out to be 69.5, then we would know this bow was 100% efficient because to pull it back, you use 69.5 joules, and you got 69.5 out of the arrow. But if it if it turned out that you only had 35 joules of energy in the arrow, what would the efficiency be then? Um, about half, about 50% efficient. And for a good bow, I think it's probably they're probably around 60 or 70 percent efficient. They're not, they're not 100 percent. They're better than cars, though, which are supposedly around 30 percent or so. Let me. I'm going to look for just a second and see if I can find a picture of what I'm about to tell you about. Because if I can find it, I think it'll be better than me trying to sketch this. These are very okay. So this question number ten that you're assigned to do for homework is related to a a trebuchet, and this is just a really simple trebuchet. This isn't like you'll see the pumpkin chunkin contest if you go to that. As you pull this back, so if I start from here and I start to pull this back, if I pull it to here and then pull it to there and then pull it to here and I hold it in position, as this gets lower, am I going to have to use more force or less force to hold it, hold it in position? But once you cross the 180 degrees, you're going to have to use more. So, say that, Tom, what were you we saying? You have to use, I don't know, once you cross the... Let me go, let me go to here, <laughs> right here, to just, if this is some heavy weight, so you're have to use and, more I, and I let it sit here, to, get closer to, to hold it, to hold it there, how much force do you need? Nothing. But as you get no. closer to the horizontal, you're going to need more and more force. More and more and more force. Once you cross it, you're going to have to have negative force. Or no. force in the uh, opposite direction. So you have to push it up? Once you get so if I have this trebuchet and I pushed it down to here and I passed no, there. No, I meant like you need less. Other way. Less force. I, way. I need less force. That way. But I don't actually have to push it back. I know. <laughs> Never mind. So you're saying you need less force. Yeah. Okay. So tell me when I get to a point where I don't need any force again. Uh, That's what I was talking there. about. Right, right yeah. there. When you get to there, oh, if you go this way, yeah, then you have to start pushing. You know, you'll, it'll just fall on you. Um, so I have provided some data in number 10 that, that shows the distance that this, this trebuchet is pulled back and how much force has to be applied. And I think it goes something like this. It's just a, it's a table. And it says, if you call this the zero meter mark, right there you have to apply a two newton force to just hold this. And then when you pull this thing back to the um, point, I think it's the point two meter mark, then the force that you have to apply is four newtons. And then when you get it back to the point four meter mark, then you have to apply a force of point, 4.5 newtons. And then when you pull it back to the 0.6 meter mark, it's 4 newtons again. And then when you get it to the 0.8 meter mark, it's 2 newtons again. So the force you have to apply here and the force you have to apply there just to hold it, those are equal. And they're less than right there. So what you have to do for this assignment is create a graph of the work done versus the distance you pulled it back. And the distance would be, you'd have zero meters, 0.2 meters, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 meters. And for each of these intervals, you just have to do force times distance to get the work for this one. And come up with an average force here. So the average force would be three newtons. In this next interval, the average force is 4.25. The distance is still, 0.2 meters. And, and from that, you create this graph which shows you the total amount of work done through this whole swing. Stephen? Did you, did you mean that you want to see the work? 
Push distance on the guy or force? Distance? Work versus distance. Okay. Force, force and distance are given. Okay. I'm giving you the forces uh, and, and the distances. So that would be just plotting points, but uh, work, you've got to do some work. <laughs> okay, now this other question, just I, I wanted to bring this up before you start putting before you start putting any kind of sights on your projectile launchers, this gun, suppose it's sighted in. So you've, you've gone out, you've gone to the rifle range, and you've shot this. And and if you have a target out there, what should I? What, what would, should we be shooting? My target. Okay. Well, see, it's got to be something. <laughs> a star. A star. Okay. So here's the star. And yeah, you gotta shoot a star. Oh, shoot. I, oh, I no, anyway, you're shooting at this. It looks like starfish. Yeah. So you're shooting at the starfish. You put the crosshairs right in the center of the starfish, and you hit the starfish dead center every time. But then you have a jellyfish, and the jellyfish, instead of being a hundred yards away where this is sighted in, the jellyfish is only ten yards away. And you do this, you, know, you've got, you see the jellyfish out there with the tentacles hanging down. You put the crosshairs right on it, boom, you miss. Now the question is, do you miss lower, do you miss high, or left or right, or what? High. high. Aaron? High. Yeah, miss high. No. Yeah, yeah, all this, you miss all low. Snipe, all the snipers, they, like, they take the uh, how wings, wings and then they... Uh, so why do you miss low? Ten clicks, whatever. Oh, <laughs> uh, I get it. You get it? Yeah. Matt? Yeah, it becomes so jelly. The barrel, oh, shh. The, the, the barrel is full of. Shh, don't. Yeah. Um, the, the barrel is below the sights. Yeah. So, the, um, you, the, the sights are actually angled slightly downwards so that um, at a certain range, um, basically, uh, if you put a line through the barrel, uh, directly through the barrel, through the sights, they intersect. At that set, at that point, but at any other place, um, they are going to be slightly off. Exactly. So I, I'm not going to spend too much time drawing myself a nice rifle. But I think it's good enough. So it, when you sight this in at whatever distance, you've got your line of sight, which is going through this scope. Oh, which is lumpy somehow. And you've also got the, the line that the bullet is following as it, as it goes out. And I, I kind of screwed up. They need to converge. converge. So somewhere out here at 100, at 100 yards. <laughs> Thank you. I should have just made a crossover way back there. So when you, when you sight these th this thing in, what you're doing is... You're just adjusting this so that if your target is out here at 100 yards away, that's where your line of sight through the scope matches up with the, the line followed by the by the bullet. And and Matt, Matt's right that the problem here, the reason you need to do this is because the the scope and the barrel are offset. The closer they are, the less of a problem you'll have with this. So if you just point at a target that's right here, you, you line it up with the scope, just like you did with the thing out at 100 yards, the bullet's going to be below it. And if you do that, you shoot at something that's right at the end of the barrel, you're, you're basically going to miss this because your line of sight's going to be right here and the barrel's right there, so the bullet's clearly not going to come out where the, where the scope is looking. And this isn't too much of a problem if you're shooting large animals at, at great distances. In fact, it can be a little bit helpful because after 100 yards, what happens is that, I wish I had more board, that they cross one another, this is the bullet. And what happens to the bullet as it goes way out there? Dropping. It'll start to drop. So it'll intersect again somewhere. So there's some point, maybe at 200 yards, this is going to be really accurate as well because then the, the bullet's going to be above the line of sight, but it'll fall back in. So you've got a pretty wide range where it's, it's pretty good. And even at close distances, if you're trying to shoot something and you're, you're that much below, you're, you're still going to hit whatever you're shooting at.
But with these projectile launchers in class, you'll want to be as, as precise as possible. And that's why I might have mentioned this before. You've got to watch out for having a sight like this. This is the one that I made. And if I sighted it in like people do with the rifle, then I would just I'd put a target maybe five meters away. And I would keep shooting until, I would keep adjusting this until when this is pointed right at my target, my, my, my spear hits the target. That's not a good thing to do though, because then when I hit, when, when I shoot at closer things, I'm going to be off by like that much. When I shoot at really long things, I'm going to be off by that much. So, do you remember what I said that I did? I don't even know if I told you. What's, what's a way, a foolproof way to make this work? What? You measure like two inches over from where you want to hit. Right. So in, in the beginning with your rifle here, to use the rifle analogy, you measure the distance from the center of your scope to the center of your barrel. And let's say that's five centimeters. And then instead of sighting in so you hit your target exactly, you sight in so that if your target is um, right here, you aim, you aim at a spot five centimeters above your target, and then you hit it. So that's what I did. I, I adjusted this. I measured the distance horizontally from here to there, and maybe five centimeters. And then I, I marked a point that was five centimeters to the right of my target. And I kept sighting this in so that when I pointed this at that point, not at the target itself, this would hit the target. So then anytime I wanted to shoot something, I would aim this five centimeters to the right of whatever I wanted to hit, and I would hit it. So, so now we just have the quiz and then launch your work time. If you decide during the quiz that you need you need formulas, I'll give you a little formula sheet and take some points off the grade. How many points are off, uh, off the grade? Off the grade? Well, you won't get any credit for the ones where you're supposed to write down the formulas. And I'll probably take out um, like 10%. So like, what's the, I'm trying to say, what's the maximum what's the amount of points? What's the maximum amount of points that we get for uh, equal to D O T plus one half. Well, try it, and then I'll help you decide. Okay. Yeah, as we go. Yeah. Just, uh, you'll need a, a blank sheet of paper. You may take, I don't know how much space you'll take to answer these, but there won't be enough space in the sheet. There's a bonus question. You don't have to do the bonus, but feel free. One person, I think, got it right last class. Yeah, you, need, you need some line paper and calculator. Functions, but if you want to use my phone, you can use that. Do oh, you have a phone with, the, with all this stuff? Yeah. Is there anybody who didn't get a quiz? Skip anybody? Oh, nice for standing on your table during the quiz. 